It was with great fanfare that Elon Musk announced SpaceX's plans to colonize Mars with the interplanetary transport system. Now, I really wish they'd stuck to their original name, the BFR, the Big Fabulous Rocket, or something like that. The problem is that the interplanetary transport system is way too close a name to another really cool idea, the interplanetary transport network, which gives you an almost energy-free way to travel across the entire solar system, assuming you're not in any kind of rush. And when you imagine rockets blasting off for distant destinations, you probably envision pointing your rocket at your destination, firing your thrusters until you get there, maybe turning around and slowing down again to land on the alien world. It's how you might drive your car or fly a plane to get from here to there. But if you played any Kerbal Space Program, you know that's not how it works in space. Instead, it's all about orbits and velocity. Three, two, one, main engine start, ignition and liftoff. In order to get off planet Earth, you have to be traveling about eight kilometers per second or 28,000 kilometers per hour sideways. So now you're orbiting the Earth, which is orbiting the Sun. Now, if you want to get to Mars, you have to raise your orbit so that it matches Mars. The absolute minimum energy needed to make that transfer is known as the home and transfer orbit. To get to Mars, you need to fire your thrusters until you're going about 11.3 kilometers per second with respect to Earth. If you escape the pull of Earth, follow a nice curved trajectory, and intercept the trajectory of Mars, assuming you timed everything right, that means you intercept Mars and go into orbit, or land on its surface, or discover a portal to hell dug into a research station on Phobos. If you want to expend more energy, go ahead. You'll get there faster. But it turns out there's another way you can travel from planet to planet in the solar system using a fraction of the energy that you would use with the traditional home and transfer, and that's using Lagrange points. Now, we did a whole video on Lagrange points, but here's the quick refresher. The Lagrange points are places in the solar system where the gravity between two objects balances out in five places. So there's five Lagrange points relating to the Earth and the Sun, and there's five Lagrange points relating to the Earth and the Moon, and there's points between the Sun and Jupiter, etc. Three of these points are unstable. Imagine a boulder at the top of a mountain. It doesn't take much energy to keep it in place, but it's easy to knock it out of balance so it comes rolling down. Now imagine the whole solar system with all those Lagrange points for all those objects gravitationally interacting with each other. As planets go around the Sun, these Lagrange points get close to each other and even overlap. And if you time things right, you can ride along in one gravitationally balanced point and then roll down the gravity hill into the grasp of a different planet. Hang out there for a little bit and then jump orbits to another planet. In fact, you can use this technique to traverse the entire solar system, from Mercury to Pluto and beyond, relying only on the interacting gravity of all those worlds to provide you with the velocity you need to make the journey. Welcome to the Interplanetary Transport Network, or Interplanetary Superhighway. Unlike a normal highway, though, the actual shape and direction these pathways take changes all the time, depending on the current configuration of the solar system. In a second, we're going to talk about what missions have already used the ITN and how humans could use this network to colonize the entire solar system. But first, I'd like to thank Scotty Jones, Chris Benninger, and the rest of our 626 patrons for their generous support. If you love what we're doing and you want to help out, head over to patreon.com slash universe today. If you think this sounds like science fiction, you'll be glad to hear that space agencies have already used a version of this network to get some serious science done. NASA greatly extended the mission of the International Sun Earth Explorer 3 using lower energy transfers. It was able to perform its primary mission and then investigate a couple of comets. The Japanese Hiten spacecraft was supposed to travel to the moon, but its rocket failed to get enough velocity to put it into the right orbit. And so researchers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab calculated a trajectory that used the Lagrange points to help it move slowly and get to the moon anyway. NASA's Genesis mission used the technique to capture particles from the solar wind and bring them back to the Earth. And there have been other missions to use the technique, and missions have been proposed that might exploit this technique to fully explore all the moons of Jupiter or Saturn, for example, traveling from moon to moon when the gravity points line up. It all sounds too good to be true. Here's the downside. It's slow, like really painfully slow. 
Like, it can take years and even decades to move from world to world. I talked to Dr. Martin Lowe, the researcher at NASA who did a lot of the work to calculate the paths of the interplanetary superhighway. According to Dr. Lowe, getting from Jupiter to Saturn takes 90 years, and going from Earth to Mars takes 10,000. But it's much quicker to hop from asteroid to asteroid, or between moons orbiting a planet. So that's where this system will really shine. Imagine the far future there are space stations positioned at all the major Lagrange points around the planets in the solar system. Maybe they're giant rotating space stations like in 2001, or maybe they're hollowed out asteroids or comets that have been maneuvered into place, and they hang out at the Lagrange points using minimal fuel for station keeping. If you want to travel from one planet to another, you dock your spacecraft at the space station, refuel, and then wait for one of those low energy trajectories to just open up. Then you kick away from the Lagrange point, fall into the gravity well of your destination, and you're on your way. In the far future, we could have space stations at all the Lagrange points, and slow ferries that move from world to world along low energy trajectories, bringing cargo from world to world, or taking passengers who can't afford the high velocity home and transfer technique. You can imagine the space stations equipped with powerful lasers that fill your ship's solar sails with the photons it needs to take you to your next destination. But then I'm a sailor, so maybe I'm overly romanticizing it. Here's another, even more mind-bending concept. Astronomers have observed these networks open up between interacting galaxies. Want to transfer from the Milky Way to Andromeda? Just get your spacecraft to the galactic Lagrange point in a few billion years as they pass through each other. With very little energy, you'll be able to join the cool kids at Andromeda. I love this idea that colonizing and traveling across the solar system doesn't actually require enormous amounts of energy. Patient, you can just ride the gravitational currents from world to world. This might be one of the greatest gifts the solar system has made available to us. What kinds of missions do you think could take advantage of this low energy transport system? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. In our next episode, we look for life on Mars. Oh, and make sure you stick around for the blooper. We've talked about how you can use low energy transits to travel around the solar system. But if you've got unlimited amounts of energy, you can travel further than you can possibly imagine by constantly accelerating, all thanks to time dilation. I'm not kidding, you could go billions of light years in a single human lifetime without going faster than the speed of light. And here's a video that we did that talks about how far you can go if you can get going fast enough. And missions have been proposed that might exploit this technique to fully exploit all the moons. Explore, not exploit.